So panic time. I had a basic outlay for my display board. I had a, a idea, a little bit of a concept. So because I'm taking the Avengers to this tournament, I decided that I would want to have a fallen Avengers tower. So here I am, uh, I went to uh, Kaiser Craft and bought a display, like a little picture frame kind of thing. And I'm just replicating the textures that I did on my Marvel Crisis Protocol board. So I'm using some sandpaper to replicate the bitumen on the road. So we're using a little bit of a combo here. So we've got some PVA glue to give a good long-term bond. And we're using a little bit of super glue so that we can panic build this board as quick as possible. So the super glue is going to hold it in place and the PVA glue is going to give us a good long-term bond. So here I am using some five millimeter um, polystyrene and I'm cutting this to replicate the curb. So I'm tracing it to fit, cutting it so that it fits with inside the frame. Double checking to make sure it fits inside the frame and we use a little bit of super glue to glue that down. So during the process, I thought it would be really cool to have a bit of a backing board. And I'm cutting some PVC. I'm cutting some PVC to simulate the backs of buildings in like a back alley kind of vibe. Now, important thing, make sure when you measure your pieces that you get the correct measurements. So instead of cutting 285 millimeters, I cut 185 millimeters. Obviously, because I'm panicking, um, it meant I didn't have enough material to fix that. But we kind of make do. So you could use anything in this backing board. You could use cardboard, you could use foam. Uh, I'm just using some PVC sheets that uh, I had scrap that a friend gave to me scrounging the house trying to find anything that will fit so cutting it to fit as you can see the inside corners of my little frame have curves so we got to make sure that we cut out a little indentation so that fits in nicely test fitting everything as we go so that we don't make too many mistakes Super glue forms a very brittle bond, but it's very quick. I did buy some uh, two-part epoxy to glue this together, but in the uh, effort of speed, I've decided to go with super glue. So hopefully this means the board will hold up uh, to the tournament and beyond. So I'm getting the angles right, using the frame as a reference point. I haven't glued it to the board yet so that I can keep working on the board. So this frame comes in two parts. You can use anything. Uh, I tried to buy a picture frame, but um, the shop where I would normally buy my picture frames from has closed down. So we're putting down some PVA glue. This is just some very thin MDF, two pieces of MDF. Uh, we put down some PVA glue to create a good long-term bond and a super glue to get it to dry immediately. Squish it down, get a little bit of squeeze out and clean it up as much as we can. So I've been painting a lot of terrain for this tournament that uh, my friend is running. So I had a few leftover bits that I discovered after I'd painted everything. 
So we have a little Marvel Crisis Protocol dumpster and a light post. So rather than just having flat, bare pieces of plastic in the back, I decided to cut out some little bracing struts just to give us a little bit of interest and depth and definition in the display board. So I've cut three approximately even strips that I'll then place on the back of the wall just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Once again, good friend super glue. Now we're gonna glue the backing board onto the display board. Give it plenty of old super glue. Give it a good squeeze in. Make sure we get a nice firm bond. More soup glue to glue the backing uh, support struts. Sweet. So when I went and bought the frame, uh, they had some MDF letters cut out. And I decided that I would get an A and I sandpapered it and cut it down so that it looked like the A on the Avengers Tower. I've undercoated the board with some Chaos Black and now we're gonna give it a little bit of color. So we've decided to uh, Mechanicus Grey as the base coat. In hindsight, to speed this up, I should have just used a can of Mechanicus Standard Grey, but uh, the texture that it gives through the airbrush in the final um, results, I actually think ended up being quite good. Gave me some texture without adding uh, too much effort. We're hitting this full blast with some Mechanica Standard Grey uh, air paint straight through the airbrush. And you can see that it gives uh, a nice little subtle texture and shadow. I'm not very patient, so while I was doing this, it felt like it was taking forever. In reality, it probably only took about 10 or 15 minutes. Obviously this step could have been done by hand or with a spray can, but sitting at my desk panicking, I thought my airbrush is going to be my fastest way to get this done. So we're not only hitting the back walls, we're also hitting the uh, concrete and the curb edging. You can see on the top of that backing board, I went a little bit too heavy with the Chaos Black Spray, but like even on the back, not on the front.
can really see there on the back of the board the subtle accidental texture that I've given the concrete on the backs of the buildings. So that's the Mechanica Standard Grey done. That's the Mechanica Standard Grey done. Come on, Dion, hurry up. There we go, Mechanica Standard Grey done. So because our next color is a lighter gray, I uh, gave the airbrush a little bit of a clean out, nothing too hectic because um, the next color is a lighter gray. Just gotta make sure the airbrush is working okay. Get rid of all the dried paint on the needle. Oh, not a lighter gray. So. We're using some air death core drab. And essentially I'm using this to replicate uh, dirt, mi mold, mildew, uh, moisture, disgusting, dirty, street grimy stuff. So I'm putting this at the joint between the wall and the cement and anywhere that moisture would accumulate. So I'm using this to um, and simulate some dirt and grime being as random as I can it was at this point that I discovered that um, the side of my spray booth actually does fall down oh there we go now you can see it better so we got some disgusting dirty green in the corners now I'm adding some dryad bark. Same thing, this is just creating some depth and shadow. Obviously the brown is simulating dirt and dust and accumulated uh, grossness. So while I was undercoating the display board, I hit my dumpster with a little bit of uh, Caliban green, and I hit the lamp post with some Rune Lord brass. I also undercoated the Avengers symbol from Avenger Tower in White Scar. Checking that they fit on the board, everything's looking good. The vision is starting to come together in my head. Now we're using the lighter gray, so this is administratum gray. And essentially, I'm using this to highlight the concrete sections. So we're hitting the tops and the edges of the curb, or edge of the sidewalk or edge of the road. 
just to lighten that up. I'm using an off card of the PC just so that uh, I don't get a lot of overspray. And now I'm using the off card to protect the edges and, and the back of the wall so I can airbrush highlight so that I can airbrush highlight the actual wall itself. So I'm cutting some leftover paper scraps just to help protect the bottom of the board so I don't get too much overspray from the highlight uh, in areas that I don't want it. I could have used marking tape, but as the, the board was very rushed, I didn't want to risk ripping up any paint that I had just previously laid down. It's very rough and ready, but it gives quite a good result. Just some nice little highlights uh, on the concrete. And then we switch slides and uh The other side for highlights. So this is just this just gives a little bit more depth and definition, and gives some separation between the raised points of the board. the old airbrush a bit of a dry out now we whack some corvus black into the airbrush and we're using this to paint the bitumen on the road so using that same scrap bit of pvc just to limit the overspray surface with the corpus black. So with what was left of the corpus black in the airbrush cup, I've added a touch of Mechanica Standard Grey and I'm mixing that together to lighten the grey just so that we can get some subtle highlights on the bitumen on the road. Give that a wash out, dump that out. So speed up our process, I'm blue tacking off the metallic bits of the street lamp and because I didn't think about this earlier, we're adding some more Mechanica Standard Grey back into the airbrush and we're just painting the base of the lamp post with some Mechanica Standard Grey. I accidentally sprayed too much of it. It should have just been the rim around the bottom. The, the bottom of the lamppost should also be brass, but too late. It's gray. Now 
Now we're just taking a lighter green. I think this is Vulcan green. And we are just going to highlight the dumpster. So nothing too fancy. I'm just airbrushing inside the centers of all of the areas. Super, super subtle. But once we put a shade on this, it should make it pop. Just give it a little bit of depth and definition. I didn't want the display board to be the main focus. I wanted the superheroes on there to be the main focus. But we also don't want the dumpster and the display board to look half fast. We want it to look decent. We want it to complement the models that go on them. So just hitting all the raised panels with the Vulcan green. done so now we're just hitting the logo on the dumpster with some black so the avengers symbol had some undercoat of white scar but i just really want to make the white pop so I'm just hitting it with some white artist's ink through the airbrush just to give it a real vibrant finish. Now I'm using some Vallejo uh, stencils. So these are some graffiti stencils. I've used them a little bit in the past before on some of my Crisis Protocol terrain. And I'm just using some more white ink through the airbrush just to get a nice bright foundation. I should have masked off underneath that one because I definitely got some white overspray on the ground. But I'm using these to do some sweet awesome lazy graffiti i'm also using the white ink to get some glow effect on the, the lamp post now we're hitting the lamp post with some agrax earth shade through the airbrush so i did this because the airbrush makes it dry quicker it gets a nice thin coat gets some nice depth and definition and in the effort of uh, speed and panic I decided that putting this the shade through the airbrush is going to help me uh, make it dry a lot faster. So now we're just hitting the dumpster with some Agrax Earth Shade, blending in all those highlights and giving it a little bit of depth and definition. The white ink has dried on the graffiti. Now I'm deciding what, um, there's me just realizing that I've got some white overspray on the ground because I didn't think about that. I decided to use some Calidor Sky as my graffiti color. Trying my best to place the template back over the area, but it does actually look quite good when uh, it doesn't perfectly line up. But 
trying our best to get it as close as possible. The graffiti is now covered in Kalidor Sky. So now we're going through with some artists heavily pigmented black ink and all of the edges of the frame and the back of the display board I want to be solid black so I'm just putting this straight through the airbrush and going all around here's me trying to fix the overspray um, if I wasn't panicking I would have just got some Mechanica standard gray back in the airbrush but I've decided to sponge on some Mechanica Standard Grey so the finish isn't perfect, but it did the job. 